السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We are visiting the tunnel of hope in Sarajevo, the tunnel which has been built underneath Sarajevo airport in 1992 to break the siege of Sarajevo. This tunnel of hope was the only lifeline for the people of Sarajevo who were actually under siege for about three years. From the other side, people were coming, actually with food, medicine, and everything to save the life of their family. The height was actually nearly 1.5 meter, the width maybe 1.2 meter, and the length of the tunnel was about 800 meters. People were used to cross this tunnel to the other side. It was an open area, green area, where surrounded by mountains where the Serb snipers were shooting at that time. It was a brilliant idea. It created Opa, another hit. And 90 Oba, third head. This is not the whole tunnel, so this is only 30 or 40 meters, but the actual tunnel is about 800 meters. And this brilliant idea was created by some of the people in the military to release the pressure on Sarajevo itself. Today we are visiting it as tourists, but in the good old days we were visiting it as humanitarian relief workers. This will tell us the story of Sarajevo, what he said, Alia is a big witch at the time. He said, We are being surrounded or under siege in Sarajevo. Like the Prophet ﷺ was under siege in the avenue of Abu Talib in Mecca for three years. And before the end of the three years, they would be able to break this siege. And they did it. And this was the vision of the visionary man who was ruling Bosnia at that time. You can imagine that the whole city was actually under siege. And this was the only way to keep them alive. In spite of all this, they came out victorious. And they were pressurized to accept an unjust peace treaty. As is mentioned by Ali Aizabegovic, said, I'm accepting the unjust peace treaty, which for me, like this man who has got a broken arm and people is twisting his arm to accept such a treaty. And now Bosnia is, is actually living in peace for the last 25 years. And we hope that with your help, your support and your advocacy to keep this peace here in Bosnia forever and to change the name of the Balkan from the land of honey and the blood into the land of honey itself. This was some of the tools have been used to dig the tunnel of hope at the time. Very primitive, very primitive, very primitive. It was a brilliant idea to dig this tunnel of hope in the middle of the residential area so nobody can see them. And you can see some of the photographs of the people here standing, planning, and digging the tunnel of hope. And these people here are resting on the other side. There's some of the writings here and some of the sketch of this area as well at that time. It was a brilliant idea from genius people to lift the siege of Sarajevo at that time. Here we can see uh, the great Ali Aizabegovic who was the first president of Bosnia at that time and was one a man of dignity, integrity and credibility, a global political and peace figure. So this is the office of Ali Aizabegovic and this is the typewriter if you still remember the typewriter and this is the flag of Bosnia as well. This is the actual size of the tunnel which you can see it here as uh, made to show you and to explain to you how they used to transfer goods, materials, medicine, uh, military equipment, injured people from one side of the city to the other side as well, including here the injured people, actually eggs here and others. These days were actually extremely difficult for the people who lived in Sarajevo at that time. We visited this tunnel and we went through it and this is some of the black sack carrying different equipments and different foods and like you see here some of the injured people would bring from this side to this side of the uh, area. These days were extremely difficult and impossible to live in Sarajevo at that time, actually, but they managed to get through this difficult time and they managed to succeed and they managed to win, come victorious of this actually misery and dirty and ugly world. Everybody here today is coming to see the past as tourists. They are tourists, but in the good old days, in the 90s, we were actually suffering as much as the Bosnian people were suffering. The weather is beautiful today. People coming from all over the place, from different parts of the world, and enjoying themselves. The only problem, and different between us and them, they have not seen it, but we have seen it. Even this small cat is very, very shocked to see all these people. And listening to me say, where these people come from? Coming to see you, little cat, and say good morning, or good evening, good afternoon, little cat. And if she was Living there at that time, she will remember what happened to the Bosnian people in this area. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hafsa and I am from Bosnia Herzegovina, Sarajevo. I'm not born in 
time of war, so I can't tell you about war, but I'm born after, and I can tell you about the consequences and our mentality. War never bring any good here, and we never wanted war. What you can see that happened to Bosniaks, to our people, is terrible and horrible and should never happen again. We are the future, my generations and lots of generations that will come after me. We need to change, we need peace. And in the war, even Bosniaks then never wanted to fight. We never wanted to come here, go at that stage where we need to fight each other. And now, after war, even now, we accept them. We accept Serbian people that bring so much pain and suffering and blood. We accept them to live among, among us. The people that hurt us, the people that bring us lots of deaths and sufferings are living uh, next to our houses. So this is just telling a lot of our mentality and how we shouldn't forget, we shouldn't forgive. But we want peace. If we wanted war, we would never let them here. So a lot of a big part of Bosnia and Herzegovina is part of a Serbian Republic, which is, and we let them live. They live because of us. They can't go to Serbia, and they're they're not really welcome here. But they they're here. Us future generations need to work on becoming one. If we can't become one and just compromise, we need to live in perfect harmony because. We would want our children to live in peace. We want our children to enjoy life, enjoy sunshine, and just try different cultures, learn new languages. And we can't do that if we, if we are willing to kill each other. For what? We're all going to die eventually, and God's merciful, and only God can judge. So we need to work at not seeing the money as something that is very important money is important to live to buy food but it's we can't live without each other you can't live without a farm and a farm that will provide us food you can't live without people that will, that will fly airplanes people that will clean streets people that will grow plants and clean air you can we can't live without each other we need to show our strengths and skills and comp compromise so we can fulfill the bigger cause to make this place uh, better to live we need to help the animals help the poor elderly because why shouldn't we what does it cost what does it cost to smile at a stranger you don't need to pay it doesn't spend your energy you just smile and you made someone's day so why shouldn't we start with ourselves why don't we plant a tree why don't we help an elderly close to cross the street why don't we feed a cat or a dog or a someone orphan Islamic Relief is here it's just one of the or many of the organizations that will help us to realize actually what is Islam and what is peace you don't need, we don't need to all be Muslims to be loving and caring. We, even we can kill each other because of the religions. Why? Because of other beliefs? Why? We're here to understand each other, make each other better. So we have only this life and only this planet. So thank you. If this inspired anybody, uh, I would be really grateful and I made duas for all of you and I really hope that we can work with each other without the hate, without all the crimes. Why? There are countries that are like so peaceful and so loving and they all live with each other. Why can't we do that with everyone? Assalamualaikum.